Welcome to the Life and Faith Podcast. I'm Dan. And I'm Josh. We're experiencing life and faith every day. And if you're listening, we hope you are too. We're talking about life, the Bible, family, news, all sorts of other stuff, all from the perspective of by faith believers. If you enjoy this conversation, like what you hear, like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Another tremendously beneficial practice as a Christian is to know the word. Yeah. The better I know the word, the more intimately I know it, the clearer picture I'll have about what has been done for me, and the more I will act out of appreciation for it. Yeah. But Dan, sometimes reading through the Bible can be daunting. I just wish like... (laughs) I wish there was an episode of somebody's <laughs> podcast that would talk about that. Are you saying that I'm overlapping? No, no, no. I, what I'm saying is is that if you skipped an episode, <laughs> here's where that episode can apply. So if you haven't listened to that episode, here's a plug. <laughs> Shameless. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, it's about scripture memory. <laughs> but it's also, it's really about just knowing what the specific scripture means and committing that to memory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being like, uh, you think about Jesus in the wilderness, the temptation where Satan came to him and tried to tempt him. His go-to every time that Satan attacked him from all these different angles, it was scripture. And, and cause he could quote it like that. And that should be the, that should be the driving force behind you reading and learning and knowing your Bible is I have to be ready at a given notice. I don't know where the attacks are going to come from, but but the word is my shield and our sword, right? It's the only way we can do battle with the daily onslaught. And if you feel like you're going through it, it's because you are. There's a spiritual warfare happening out there. We see on the surface things happening, but there's things happening behind the background. Uh, and, and Jesus gave us that example. So you're you're barking up the right tree, absolutely. Sometimes people will, especially when we're starting out, we might think that we know what the Bible says, but we can be wrong. Yes, it's true. We might think uh, one that I hear, uh, I've actually (laughs) one that I've actually heard is God only gives you what you can handle. (laughs) Yeah, there's scripture that says otherwise. So there's just those things. It's like those ideas that you sort of, you assume, you may assume that they're in the Bible and it turns out they're not. It turns yeah. out this, the truth about a given subject is actually way deeper than yeah. a, 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 a pithy saying. Yeah. And, and what do we mean by that, Dan? We mean that um, when it comes to what the Bible has for us, it goes back to what we were saying earlier about Jesus and apart from me you can do nothing. So if if we feel overwhelmed, it's like what's going on? I thought that Christian song on the radio said that he won't give us more than we can take. <laughs> well, like what's happening? I saw this it on is a coffee mug just yeah, not a week like, ago. <laughs> that's got to be in the Bible. So what's happening here to me? Why am I so overwhelmed? And many times our overwhelmed feelings is that that um Going back to another podcast where we said like the check engine light and some people just try to like, let's let's unplug that so we don't get that. That's many times that's a warning in your life that um, something's out of sync with God and your relationship with him. And you need to get that right because you, you need to be dependent upon him. You're talking about works, the whole idea behind this podcast episode. And that's a sure sign that you're doing it in your own willpower if you're just constantly feeling overwhelmed. You shouldn't feel like that because... Depending on the Lord's strength, that's how you get through the stuff that is more than we can bear. Yeah, I'd like to just point out that you just made my you made an additional point that I was making earlier, which was it is not the message yes. of don't be worried. Yes. It's the message of you won't be worried if you point your attention toward him. Yep. That so instead of telling people is... stop it, that's not helpful to people. <laughs> so change stop it with Oh, you're experiencing this. Let me help you. Like, 
you know, and, and put, you know, you can put it into better words more eloquently than I'm doing right now, but you know, you can help some walk somebody through that. Focus on what he has for you. And the, one of the, one of the critical ways that you do that is by having knowledge of the Bible, having knowledge of his word. He went through so much to give it to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So preserved it, preserved it. Over these, yeah. One of the best ways we can be equipped for the challenges of life is to know what it has to say. Because when the moments matter, the ability to recall the right verses yes. will be critical. Yes. Right? When you're on your heels, because life is put a few people on their heels. It'll knock you down. It's, it's uh, such a cool skill. And it's a it's a great skill to have in the life of a believer, when your nerves are up or when you have challenges in your life and you don't know what to do. It's a cool thing to have that foundation uh, of what the word actually has to say. It's a key element characterized by living by faith. Yeah. The effort we put into scripture memory leads to a healthy foundational knowledge of God's will for our lives. Scripture memory prepares you for eventualities as if you're carrying around a spiritual first aid kit. Yeah, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Oh, I, I, have, my, I have that for this situation. Yep. It leads to wisdom. And wisdom, uh, or to be wise, is to show knowledge, experience, and good judgment. Yeah. That's Dis- what wisdom means. Discernment, too. You, you gain discernment through the Holy Spirit. But also the word. That's the dynamic duo. Paul says in his first letter to the Thessalonians, he says, For this reason, we constantly thank God when we when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it. Not as the word of mere men, but as it, it really is the word of God, which is also at work in you who believe, right? It's not just some cool sayings. Hmm. It's the word of the Lord yeah. to you. So if you are if you are not a person who mes- memorizes scripture, I have a few simpler verses you can start with. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm. That's good. It's an easy one, right? Yeah. 1 Chronicles 16, 11. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. You might remember this. Rejoice always. Yeah. (laughs) Pray without ceasing. Full circle. In everything, give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Right. It's a little bit longer than the shorter ones, but it's like, but it's so, it's like rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. They're noticeably shorter even there, you know, than the other verses. Yeah. I think that's by design. Psalm 56.3, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. Mm -hmm. Right. Acts 16.31, they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved, you and your household. Yeah. So just a handful of them. You can can just simply Google easy verses to memorize if you want to get into the habit of of scripture memory. Memorization is important for sure. So... I'm asking a question I already have an answer to for myself, but I want to hear your answer. Sure. Have you chosen a life's verse? Do you have a life's verse or do you have a, like in your marriage, do you have a life's verse? Yeah, I will say in my marriage, uh, something that like when there's a holiday, ever since we were dating, if we have like a a card that we get one another, um, we would uh, typically write Romans 828 in it. Um, and that stemmed from, uh, you know, we didn't have like a normal dating relationship like most people did. We had a long distance relationship. I lived in uh, Fort Worth area of Texas, and then she lived up here in this area of um, Michigan. And so we only got to see each other in short little visits. And then we'd have to part again, and it was hard. 
Uh, again, this goes back to a principle I, I gave on one of the earlier episodes, but you know, uh, it may seem a little trivial even in today's like adult world, but for us as uh, young kids, really, you know, we were we were uh, in our upper teens, but at the same time, it that was the biggest thing that we had gone through at that point. So it was really hard, um, and even then, we can still like even when things are rough right now, maybe circumstances going on in our marriage. I've still, I've even recently looked at her and I said, I'm just glad that we get to do all this together. And at the end of the day, I go home to you at the end of the day, like, like we don't have to part. Speaking of thankfulness, like that's something I constantly go back to. At least we're together now. At least we're not across the country. I I still, that's still a source of encouragement to me where God took us from. So getting us through that tough season for us was Romans 828. And even still in our marriage, we continue to say that. And that's obviously, you know, if, if anybody's not familiar with the reference, um, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And uh, so, and many times, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for us in a moment, but it's all working together for our ultimate good. And really, what is our good? What is our good is what God determines is good. And that's the tough part, really, of that verse is it's not always what you think is good. <laughs> But ultimately, if God views, views it as good, it's good in every sense of the of the word there. So that that's hard. But and, and then I guess for me personally, I've had two kind of life verses. The first half of my life in my younger years, it was um, Galatians two twenty, for I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. In the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. Um, and that's got me through a lot of hard times as well. But um, a much shorter verse, I just rattled off a pretty long verse, but a short verse that has taken me far in the last, I'd say, 10 years of my life, 11 years of my life has been John 3.30. And that is, he must increase, I must decrease. And there's a lot packed into that little verse, but it is the it is both the encourager to me and the and what levels me. At the same time of like bringing me back down when I'm I go to higher than I should, yeah. Our family has a life verse. I don't know if anybody in our family knows it except for me, or that we even have it, but it's there. And our verse is Ephesians one three, which says, "Praise be to the God." and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Mm. That's good. We did decide that back a while back, but we just don't, we don't focus on it much and that's not good. But we, you know, we, um, but it is there. That's one that I always come back to. That's half the battle. Having it. Second half is, you know, (laughs) keeping it at the forefront. Keeping it at the forefront. Yep. And we don't, um, well, anyway, all scripture is useful uh, for teaching and training in righteousness, but some people do find it helpful to pick a verse and sort of stick with that one or yes. or have it define a season and, and meditate on it in, in life. You can almost view those verses as your anchors. Like the whole Bible, like you just said, it's profitable. It's needed. None of it's, you know, none of it we can do without. But I think God, the Holy Spirit leads you in that for a reason. Are you a person who memorizes scripture makes yes, a practice of it i would say definitely did a way better job of it as a kid because i was uh my parents put me in um you know different programs like awana uh those types of curriculums you know that teach you verses um i've done some of it on my own uh but yeah i think just uh memorizing it enough to where it becomes you speak it like a language it should we should as christians we should speak another language and that's biblical whatever you want to call it you know a biblical language we should have that so i'd say you know i there there's been seasons of life too where i've given it more attention uh where maybe i'll commit to like a season like i just got through talking about there's a season of life where we're going through right now where we're praying earnestly for something and we've been through other seasons of life where I've just committed to, I'm going to lead 
my wife in like a little Bible study and we're going to talk about it and we're going to memorize scripture together. And it's, it stretches us every time with trying to memorize, especially the older you get, right? It's <laughs> harder and harder to commit things to memory, but uh, it's good. It's a good discipline. I agree. It's one of the things that, again, just equips you for those, cha- those times when, uh, when you need it. Yeah. I have a few tips for someone who wants to memorize scripture. The first one is to set a goal. You might think that you want to memorize five or something like that. Or I want to memorize one thing this month. Or maybe you'll say like a year, I want to memorize one per month. Or maybe you'll say that you want to memorize an entire chapter, which is a lofty goal. But... Set them, right? The next tip I want to give you is find a rhythm when memorizing. I'll give you an example. I think it's Philippians. It says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Mm. When memorizing, it helps in my mind as a musician, maybe that's where I get it, but to memorize it in a sort of a rhythm. If you can find ones that may, that meet a kind of rhythm, then they become easier to easier to recall. Yeah. The important part um, about the verses are is to know what they're saying. So it's good to pair addresses with verses, but remember that that's secondary. You mean like the references? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're how to find it? Yeah, and not that that's not important, <clears throat> but it is. And it is, but at the same time, knowing what the verse says is far more valuable than yeah. knowing where to find it. That's a good point because I do that regularly on this podcast. I will quote a verse and I may not be able to tell you because I didn't come prepared with that verse. I just came to my memory and I can't always tell you what the reference is because I don't always remember it. But, I, you know, it, certainly if I've prepared, I will include the reference. So you're right. Like having it called memory, people can find it like today's language in today's world of technology i can say a verse you can look up that phrase that i said in that verse and you can probably find it if you really wanted to know where is that in the bible yeah. is it in the bible yeah so i would say if you're working on memorizing it don't get hung up if you get that wrong yeah mm-hmm. work more on sort of what the word says as opposed to where to find it yeah, yeah. another tip for particularly long sections Memorize, okay, this is more of a technique that I uh, learned about, that I like, that I use. For for memorizing long sections, memorize the first letters of the important words and try to find patterns that make sense. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Mm. It'd be hard to memorize that whole thing, but I would do it if I was to memorize this one. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, so that's T-U-B, by the mercies of God, so I'd say B-M-G, to present your bodies, P-Y-B, a living and holy sacrifice, L-H-S, Acceptable to God, so I'd put A to G, which is your spiritual service of worship. So I'd say W I S S W. Mm. And I would memorize T U B B M G P Y B L H S A to G W I S S W. Memorize that and find a pattern in there to recall and then be able to come up with the verse. Yeah. Mm hmm. So that's just the technique that I found works. Yeah. Because it's easier to memorize those little three-letter acronyms. Yeah, I, I often imagine scripture memory like this. What if I, for some reason, like the the likelihood of this happening is super low, but like what if I found myself on a deserted island? No Bible. Or what if... Um, what what if you know something bad happens in our country and all the bibles are taken away i cannot have access to one anymore they're all you know whatever scenario 
your mind then would be that your memory of the Bible is your only Bible. And would I be able to write out, you know, like I can tell you, I would be frantically trying to re- to write out every verse I can remember and, and at least trying to preserve it in some way so I could go back to it. So it's, it's important. You're always going to have a Bible with you, even in daily life. So, yeah. The last tip I would have for you is practice makes perfect. You know, just make it a regular habit like you do with um, with prayer, like we talked about earlier. And again, not not a not not as to show. I mean, yeah, you want to you want to do what's right, but do it in as a, as a with the goal in mind of having a more intimate relationship mm. with the Lord, not to show yourself as somebody who can. I really have a lot of scripture memory, right? Yeah. You know, and it's not for your own glory but just to have that intimate relationship definitely encourage that you've been listening to the life and faith podcast we hope you enjoyed it stay up to date on all our episodes like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts